Please, won't you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into the heart of God this morning. Amen. Should have sprayed before I prayed. <laughs> God, made, <laughs> God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. This is our seventh annual animal blessing. <laughs> Can you believe that, that we've been doing this for seven years? It's a tradition I started when I arrived, much to the chagrin of some of our old-time members who are worried about pooping in the sanctuary. <laughs> this is the first year that I've actually had a pet to bless as well. I, I be previously did not actually have an animal to bless myself, so it was kind of ironic that that was the hill that I chose to die on, right, seven years ago. Um, she's conspicuously not here. Did you notice that, that my, my pet is not here? <laughs> um, Pastor Zach brought his, um, who performed for all of you. Mine is not really fit for human <laughs> consumption. <laughs> Yeah, Lawrence did so good. Holly would not have done so well. So God made my hound Holly and saw that she was good, but Holly is bad around other dogs and sometimes people. She is the biggest pain in the neck in my family, as a matter of fact, and that is saying a lot. Right, Cecilia? <laughs> Over the three months sabbatical I took last year, I tried to learn how to be a dog owner. That's what I did pretty much the whole time that you didn't see me. I read the entire internet and I studied my dog's signals and I tried to make sense of her every change and I obsessed over her. I hiked or walked every single day with my dog for hours at a time. That is what I did over sabbatical, in case you were wondering. As some of you know, I wasn't much of an animal person. I, di I never disliked animals. I just didn't know how to communicate with them. I'm very verbal, right? And animals are not always. So I learned a lot about the subtleties of dog behavior over my sabbatical. I employed two dog trainers um, and worked with my dog daily to help her become less reactive. I became less reactive as a, re a result, and she didn't. <laughs> I spent my days considering the lilies because I had my dog, Holly. They neither toil nor spin. And Holly doesn't know that she is going to die. So her neuroses simply comes from not being loved enough, right? Over sabbatical, I spent my time admiring these truths and trying to learn from them. Imagine not knowing you are going to die. Maybe being loved and loving is enough. I have put so much effort and time and money into trying to change my dog and it mostly hasn't worked. One of the trainers I have had said to me once, you know what Robin, it doesn't matter if people and other animals love your dog. Only you have to. And it doesn't matter if your dog, dog loves other people and other animals. She only has to love you and her family. And I do, I love her regardless of her neuroses and the fact that she peed on my bed when she was nervous last week when I was at the Davis Mega Farm Festival. I know, I forgive her because I love her. And I know that's how God loves us too. God who created us loves us even when we growl and snap at strangers. God still blesses us. God still calls us good. Dogs have something to teach us about our relationship with God too. So yesterday I was walking Holly in the woods behind my house. Have you all been on that trail back there? Um, what's it called? the uh, the trail that's the butt trick trail 
it's actually through that parking lot that's why i keep pointing over there you can go up and then over into the woods and to my house don't try it with your dog because then your dog will encounter my dog and my dog will freak out but anyway you, I'm just kidding. You can go on that trail. It's, I was walking a holly in the woods there yesterday on a long lead so that she can run. And she took off like a bat out of hell after a squirrel deep into the woods. And I let go of her leash to avoid shoulder dislocation. And I couldn't see her for a while. I mean, it might have been 30 seconds, but it felt like three hours. And I called out to her over and over again, Holly, come. Holly, come, Holly, come. With increasing desperation, I walked further off the path and into the woods. Holly, come. And just when I thought I had lost her forever, about 30 seconds into my frantic calling, after I'd resigned myself to walking home and telling Andy that I had lost our dog probably forever, I turned around and she was standing on the path behind me right where she left me, waiting for me. Bad dog, I said. And for the rest of our walk, she stuck to me like glue, just right by my side or behind me. She just never left my leg. <laughs> so Holly is easily distracted, but she knows to whom she belongs. When she is lost, she returns home forgiven. That's like our relationship with God, isn't it? We know to whom we belong, we return home forgiven. So this may seem like a strange week for me to be talking about dogs and blessing our pets while the world burns. This is normally one of our high holidays at First Church, and this year there is no alpaca or sheep, though there is a goat, and we can't be in our building like we normally are, and 214,000 people have died of COVID-19 in the United States, and our children aren't in school buildings, and unemployment is at an all-time high, and a new civil rights movement rages on, and the news cycle has been dominated by more death and more fear and more divisiveness and more confusion and more dangerous media and powerful government officials obscuring truth and more dehumanization and more domestic terrorism and polls show that both democrats and republicans fear that democracy in america is deeply imperiled we are not only unable to come together to solve the problems causing our neighbors to die we have a contempt problem so severe that we are unwilling to we have separated ourselves from each other and from God in the most violent and deadly ways. And yet, we come together over our love of beings, of animals. And St. Francis, who we honor today, had something to teach us about God with his love of animals. He preached about empathy for animals like wolves and birds, largely for the benefit of other humans who thought at the time that they should have dominion over the animal world, not that they needed humble lessons from the animal world, right? His message was similar to Jesus' message, that we should be more like animals. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today is trouble enough for today, Jesus says. We're all just scared. Our separation, our contempt, even our violence, it all comes from fear. An animal brain space is occupied with whether there is food in the food dish and a warm place to rest and somebody to scratch a belly. The animal kingdom doesn't have a concern in the world about the economy or the global pandemic threatening our lives, the state of health care or how to vote for the president in a few weeks. The animal kingdom isn't fretting about whether or not they will get an A in geometry class so they can go to a good college. 
The animal kingdom isn't trying to find some sort of perfect work-life balance or which moms are gossiping about them on the soccer field. The animal kingdom doesn't go to church trying to make sense of the fact that they are alive and have to die. Wendell Berry writes, When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in the beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Animals have much to teach us if we let them, not just about peace, but about love. So we will bless our animal companions today for our own healing, to rest in the grace of the world because they remind us to come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. And like God, they hound us for love and forgive us for the very worst things. May we bravely show that example of love to the world. Amen.